President Mohamedou Buhari last week took delivery of the much-talked-about herbal preparation from Madagascar, COVID Organics, which the government of that country continues to promote as being eff efficient in the fight against COVID-19. However, the president is reserving judgment on it, but promised to, in quotes, listen to science, as he puts it. Now, on their own, what do Nigerian scientists think about COVID Organics? Joining us now is Professor Mujisola Adeyeye, the Director General of the Nigeria Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC. We're going to be looking at what the agency is doing to enlighten members of the public as a way of checking drug abuse, in addition to their interagency collaboration in the fight against COVID-19. Mrs. Adeyeye, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Good yes, good morning. Well, quickly, let's start with uh, COVID organics. We understand that Nigeria has taken delivery of the uh, donation uh, by uh, the government of Madagascar. We would like to know um, if you have an idea of uh, how large that consignment of uh, COVID uh, organics uh, harbor mixtures are. Um, and then, secondly, uh, NAVDAC is supposed to take it through the regulatory process. Has that started? And how soon? And then, again, what do you think about the idea of Madagascar staying ahead of the game? The Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, through its president, Mazi Samohom Ohamboa, has said that it is uh, disgraceful that Nigeria is uh, taking a donation from, uh, from uh, Madagascar in terms of herbal mixtures, whereas we have uh, a lot in terms of uh, phytomedicine uh, in Nigeria. And I think you yourself, you've been quoted as uh, saying that COVID-19 is a slap on the face of uh, Nigeria. How do you mean when you say that? Well, uh, I learned that the COVID organic uh, arrived in Nigeria, uh, I think, just uh, the end of last week. And uh, I'm very proud uh, to hear the president, uh, Buhari, said that he's going to listen to science. Um, first of all, I applaud Madagascar for looking inwards, uh, looking at uh, what they can do for themselves in terms of COVID-19, uh, organic or the, or the mixture. And now that it's here, uh, the plan is to send the samples to NAVDAC. Uh, NAVDAC's mandate, of course, is to control uh, the distribution, the sale, and the use uh, of, and also to make sure that, uh, you know, it is very safe, uh, no adverse events or adverse reactions. Uh, so the samples will be sent to NAVDAC. And what NAVDAC will do is our due diligence. Uh, usually we'll go through safety, safety which includes toxicity, microbial content, uh, phyto, the phytochemistry uh, profile, uh, and some other physical chemical uh, tests we'll perform on, on the uh, Madagascar mixture. And uh, that is safety. After safety is clinical trial. NAVDAC has to make sure that if there's going to be clinical trial at all, that uh, the protocol is such that it will stand international scrutiny, meaning we're going to use international best practices, and we're going to also inspect the site where the clinical trial will be done. Very likely there will not be clinical trial, because why? We have a lot of herbal medicinal plants in our country. God has blessed us with rich biodiversity. Uh, for Nigeria to receive uh, the, organic, the COVID organic, uh, it's okay. If, because this is, a, this is a difficult time uh, about the COVID-19. You want to find out where you can get something. But it is almost like what you are looking for uh, in a far off place is already in your backyard. And I know that it is in our backyard. However, we have not put a lot of emphasis on research of our herbal medicinal plants over the years, uh, but it's high time now. We have we we, we started doing something. Uh, we inaugurated uh, the herbal medicine product committee March of last year uh, to put a list 
of practitioners and researchers uh, together. And uh, we've had a third meeting uh, to make sure that there is trust between the two groups. The, uh, and what NAPDAC is doing is to be go between uh, the researchers and the herbalists, aside from uh, doing our own regulatory controls uh, on whatever is submitted to us. There is a high potential to have something similar uh, to the Madagascar mixture in Nigeria. In fact, we have a lot of uh, herbal mixtures uh, in our listed uh, herbal products, meaning the herbal products on our listed database. When somebody uh, has uh, a potential herbal medicine, the person is supposed to submit it to NAVDAC for scrutiny, for safety uh, study, and that is this listing process. We've recently uh, made it a little more easier, uh, much easier to, uh, to submit uh, the application and all the things that they will need to, uh, to put in the application. And, uh, we're going to work with any uh, practitioner, herbalist, uh, researcher that has anything related to COVID-19. That is part of our own uh, regulation to expedite the safety uh, studies so that if there is so much potential, we can actually, jump the, the, the applicant can easily jump into the clinical trial mode. Uh, but uh, we are working very hard in NAVDAC to ensure that our own local content is given adequate attention. And the government is doing that. The government is really doing that at the micro level, small, uh, medium-sized enterprises level. Uh, and one thing that has come out of the COVID is that we have been brought to a halt to look inwards, to look at ourselves. How are we doing? How much dependence do we have on other countries? And there's nothing wrong in relating to other countries and trading. But we are, we are dependent too much on things made outside the country instead of appreciating what we have. So in terms of the herbal medicine uh, in Nigeria, we're going to really uh, have a breakthrough uh, because research is going on as we speak. And we're going, NAVDAC is going to come alongside the researchers to ensure that we have something similar to COVID organic. Professor Ade, thank you for that. And also, uh, now the Malagasy COVID organics that were donated to us and have come in for testing, we're now being told are going to get a quick lab analysis. So I'd like to ask you how quick exactly that is. And to add to that, the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria have said that they have actually had or submitted several relevant drugs. Uh, uh, um, sorry, they had that claim that they had several drugs waiting to be developed. But of course, that is not the same story that we are getting from NAFDAC. In a statement, you said that you had actually only received one, I believe, one application for the treatment of COVID symptoms. Is this application also being fast-tracked like the Malagasy COVID organics? And why are we getting these mixed messages from the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria and then all the, um, other organizations like NAFDAC? Actually, it is not a conflicting message. Uh, before February of this year or January of this year, nobody was thinking COVID. The word COVID is was not in our vocabulary. Don't go yarrow or neem uh, plants. We've been using it for ages. There are a lot of uh, applications or products rather in our database that have neem as one of the components, but we weren't thinking of COVID when it comes to neem or don't go yarrow. So the fact that we have as uh, many uh, anti-malarials in our database doesn't mean that COVID was associated mm -hmm. with such products. COVID was never associated with any product. It, it was just about two weeks plus ago that we got something that is tied to COVID, a natural medicine that some, you know, that uh, uh, is being proposed for submission to us. That was just about two weeks plus ago. But the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria 
is right to say that we have submitted that are that Hello? Hello, okay. Professor. Sorry. That, that's, that's okay. That we have anti malaria uh, med about medicines that we have in our database. But now that uh, uh, chloroquine is being talked about as, effect uh, as uh, effective to, to, to some extent, that is now being looked at in clinical trial treatments, everybody is now having a flashback. Can Dongo Yaro work? Can Artemisia work? which we already have. So that is why, you know, uh, the COVID-19 and anti-malarials are coming together uh, in, in terms of possible uh, link. But there is no conflict at all in or contradiction in what the pharmaceutical society said, that we have something similar already, but we never associated something similar to uh, COVID, something similar to the COVID organic. We never associated it with COVID, uh, COVID until a few months ago, until maybe two months ago. And everybody started, you know, working towards uh, thinking of researching into the possibility of uh, effectiveness of some of the anti malaria Well, Prof, long before uh, Madagascar came uh, into the picture, and we started hearing mm -hmm. about uh, COVID organics, uh, yes. Professor Maurice Iwu here in Nigeria, I talked about having found a cure for COVID-19, uh, some drug that you referred to, I think, I, IHP, uh, about tea or something like that. And they approached the authorities. Uh, so many Nigerians are asking now, OK, we're taking a donation of herbal mixture from uh, Madagascar. What happened to the proposal by Professor Maurice Iwo, which he said had even been used previously uh, for Ebola and also a dengue uh, fever. And then secondly, uh, around April 28, there was a letter that was released into circulation indicating that the Department of Complementary and Alternative Medicine in the Federal Ministry of Health had approached NAVDAC to take a look at a herbal mixture uh, that could relieve uh, some ailment, uh, some, you know, indications related to COVID-19. Uh, what is the position with that? Is it true that the uh, Federal Ministry of Health indeed approached uh, NAVDAC? Okay, thank you so much. I will take uh, the pro Professor Iwo's uh, uh, product first. Uh, Professor Iwo is one of our members uh, the Herbal Medicine Product uh, Committee. Uh, we launched this uh, committee together in uh, March of last year in NAVDAC. Uh, and I do not dispute the fact that he may have something that can work for COVID-19. Uh, but we have, not, we have never received anything. Uh, I mean, NAVDAC has never received any application from Professor Iwu. And I believe that he's probably working towards that now. Because we had a meeting about 10 days ago. It's a, an, a Zoom meeting. And he was there. Uh, and I challenge all of us that anybody that has anything, any product uh, that things can work for COVID to submit an application. We have to go through process. NAVDAC is a regulatory agency joined at the hip with other regulatory agencies all over the world. So we cannot just do whatever we think we want to do. We have to follow regulatory science because it is driven by evidence. So we are welcoming any application uh, and submission that has a claim for treating COVID-19 symptoms or COVID-19 itself. It's a welcome thing. It would be a great thing for me. I'm a proponent of herbal medicines. I was raised up on herbal medicines. I was working on herbal medicine uh, for sickle cell anemia uh, for years before I came to NAVDAC. So it is not strange to me at all. But I also know that we have to go through the science protocol. So uh, we have not gotten anything from Professor Iwo. In terms of the Ministry of Health uh, letter uh, that got viral to, my, to our surprise, uh, the, it was an intent, it's an expression of intent to submit an application. And there's nothing wrong 
in having an expression of interest. So we quickly re responded that uh, if Ministry of Health is interested and then there is somebody that will have a market authorization holding of the product, that we should, the ministry should give us a legal document because NAVDAC has been brought into legal issues unnecessarily of, okay, who is going to be the market authorization? There is nothing, the Ministry of Health is not going to be on the bottle or on the package. It's going to be X company. So we said, please give us uh, the details of who is going to be the market authorization holder. And also if there's intellectual property that will arise from this uh, product, who is going to hold it? These are things that we sometimes don't pay attention to in our culture, but we have to, so that when it gets to, in the, in the near future, there won't be any problem. And we don't want NAVDAC to be dragged into any legal issues. Because once money starts flowing from anything, the best of friends can become the best of enemies. So uh, we, we, send the, we, we, we responded to the ministry with that uh, content, and we also attached all the things that need to be submitted. If I have a product and I said plant A plus B plus C will work, that is okay. But you have to now describe what is plant A. What does it do? Plant B, what does it do? And what is the what are the uses individually and what are the uses in combination? These are the types of uh, requirements that we need in order to submit the uh, application for listing for safety evaluation. So that is where we are with the Ministry of Health. Uh, expression of interest. Thank you, Professor Ade. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to take you back a bit to my previous question, the first part of the question I asked you, where I asked you, um, with regards to the Malagasy COVID um, organics herbal mixture, how long is this quick lab analysis expected to take? And then the one application that NAFDAC has received within Nigeria, is that application also going to get a quick lab analysis? To add to that, I'd also like to bring something in here. The president of Madagascar, Andrew Rajoelina, in a recent interview with a French television station, had said that he believes that the main reason there's a lot of rejects towards their cure or towards their supposed cure is because this is coming from Africa. Do you think that even if this proves to be a hopeful remedy, or even if here in Nigeria we find a herbal mixture of our own that is hopeful, do you think that this is something that can become, that can be seen and be used on the global stage, or do you think that it will just be rejected? Thank you. That's a very good uh, question. Uh, since the beginning of uh, the COVID pandemic, we have been working around the clock. I'm talking of working around the clock for anything related, any commodity related to COVID-19. Testing kits, rapid testing kits. We've gotten about 40 something applications. We have approved about 14 or 15 because we have to go through stringent uh, scrutiny to make sure that whatever is coming to our country will be safe, will be dependable, will have good sensitivity, good specificity. That is for testing kits. For the drug, that is that are the, the therapeutics that are going through clinical trials, we've been doing analysis to ensure that if 100% medicine or active ingredient is in a tablet, it is 100% that we're going to get. Uh, when we analyze it. So we have been doing expedited review. Uh, for example, our review process goes through months. Uh, we have dropped a lot of reviews to 10 days for many of the commodities. But for herbal medicine, it is a drug. There are many steps that we have to go through. But it will not be 10 days, but we're going to expedite. And all our directors are ready uh, for that. The lab directors, uh, the registration director, the drug evaluation research director, they are all ready uh, to expedite any COVID-related product that is submitted to us. The one for Madagascar, we have not received it. As soon as we receive it, we're going to expedite. I refer to that uh, uh, in passing uh, shortly, you know, in my, in my, in, in my discourse with you. So exp exp expedited review, yes because this is important to us. Uh, any COVID-related product will be expedited. 
It will not be overnight. Again, herbal medicine is a is drug. And herbal medicine is more complex than orthodox drug. Very complex because there may be 10, 8 by, uh, chemical markers that are active in one herbal medicine. And the way nature has done it is that they work in concert. So you cannot just take one out and say this is going to work. You know, they work in concert. That's the way nature has made them. But nonetheless, we're going to expedite. And then in terms of uh, acceptance uh, by WHO and that of the, the Madagascar COVID organic, uh, I don't know too much about uh, the resistance that is being given. But again, I mentioned earlier that a regulatory agency is driven by regulatory science. Things have, have to be done properly. Of course, in an expedited manner. So I'm not sure of the details of the, of the Madagascar organic. For example, what we are going through or what we're going to be going through uh, in, you know, very, very soon, once we start getting application, we have to document it. We have to show that it has evidence that this is going to work. And these are the tests that we did. They are repeatable. So that when WHO or any other regulatory agencies, when we discuss with them, we talk a lot among ourselves. We present what we're experiencing. It can be believable. It, it must be believable. That doesn't mean to be 100% accepted, but it should be believable because data do not lie. Once you have good data and you go through the regulatory process, of course, it may be, there's no, no doubt that it will be accepted. So we, are, we, we don't expect any resistance at all. My goal as a DG NAVDAC is to get us on the global platform. And that is why you have to go through international best practices so that the medicine we approve in Nigeria can be sold in the US, can be available in the US, can be available in Japan. We receive medicines from China, from India. I'm talking of herbal medicines. How come that our own cannot? That is where we are, what we are aiming at. But most importantly, we want to make sure that the health of the user is safeguarded. Well, Professor Adeyeye, in March, uh, NAVDAC, and, and I think you, yourself too, well, when you appeared on this program, uh, you said yes. that NAVDAC had approved uh, chloroquine for clinical trials for the treatment yes. of COVID-19 in Nigeria. But as at yes. last week, NAVDAC was again saying that it had not yet approved any drug at all for the treatment of uh, COVID-19 in Nigeria. So it's a little bit, too bit uh, confusing. And yet, uh, I know you've talked about uh, listing and applications and the scientific process, but there are already some drugs out there on the streets of Nigeria uh, tied to the solution to uh, COVID-19 or COVID-19 cure. Uh, what is NAVDAC really doing in terms of chloroquine and your reference earlier on to May and Baker, and then all these drugs that are on the streets uh, being described as uh, COVID-19 uh, solutions? Okay. It actually is a good opportunity to restate what I've already stated. Uh, sometimes we hear half a sentence and we make it up into a sentence. There's a difference between approval of a drug for clinical trial treatment as opposed to approving a drug for routine treatment. Chloroquine is not approved for routine COVID, uh, for, 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 excuse me, chloroquine is not approved for, chlor for uh, routine use. I'm sorry, I'm stomping on myself. Chloroquine is not approved for routine use. Chloroquine is approved for clinical trial treatment in hospital setting isolation centers. So there is no contradiction between, that, between the two. In fact, I saw the headline on one of the newspapers said, uh, NAVDAC says chloroquine, or uh, NAVDAC is opposed to chloroquine. No, it's because we try, sometimes we, we, we want people to hear what we want people to hear. Chloroquine is approved for clinical trial treatment, but it's not supposed to be used routinely without a medical doctor, uh, a medical expert to guide. So that is very, very uh, clear. So there is difference between approval for clinical trial treatment and approval for routine use.
Professor Adeyeye, thank you for that clarification. Now, I'd like to go on to something else, another controversy that's come up. This is between now the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and NAFDAQ, whereby, with, uh, with regards to the rice that was sent to Oyo states that was contaminated, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs had come out to say that it was approved by NAFDAQ initially. Now, NAFDAQ said that that did not happen and the rice was not approved by NAFDAQ. The NAFDAQ had only approved rice in certain local government areas within Lagos and Ogun states, I believe. Now, Sadia Farouk insists that NAFDAQ approved, saying that there's even a certificate that was conveyed to them by customs. How do you react to this? Actually, the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs may not be wrong, uh, because if you say, if you show somebody that uh, rice is approved, uh, it is, well, if rice is approved, so she yeah. may... <laughs> Professor Adeyaya, do go on. My apologies. Yes, she may just uh, be reacting to what she saw. So I don't have any problem with that. But again, I, I love uh, science. I love process. If you can document uh, a process, you have an ammunition. The, the command uh, centers where we went to inspect and to sample to test the rice, we have them in our record. And record, you cannot dispute record. You cannot dispute evidence. We did not go to the Oyo uh, Oshun Command Center in Ibadan to test, any, to, to test any sample of rice before that was distributed uh, to Oyo State. So it is, I don't know what happened. Uh, the thing is that where would they call us, we go. If they didn't call us, they will not, there's no way that we're going to guess that we should go and inspect something. So if there is no conflict as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what NAVDAQ did is what NAVDAQ will say that they did. Well, uh, Prof, uh, uh, there was a second leg to the question that I asked you earlier. I said, look, there are some drugs that are already out there, some herbal mixtures or whatever, uh, by some Nigerians being uh, passed off as cure for uh, COVID-19. Uh, and I'm sure you must have seen some photographs of those uh, small, small bottles. Now, what is NAVDAQ doing to make sure that people who have not been given any approval do not continue to mislead Nigerians? And, you know, do you have uh, a public enlightenment uh, department uh, that is making an effort to educate Nigeria about, you know, uh, whether or not uh, certain drugs have been approved or not? And then what's the essential difference between listing and approval, because sometimes those who are not uh, professionals may not quite understand. I know the listing you say is renewable every two years. Once something is listed, does it automatically uh, qualify as something that can be administered? Thank, thank you so much. Uh, Pharmaco vigilance and post-marketing surveillance is one of the most important directorates in NAVDAQ. Uh, that directorate uh, goes after uh, users, distributors, sellers of our regulated products, post-marketing, meaning, or post approval rather. And the ones that have been the, the harbor mixtures or COVID-19, so-called COVID-19 mixtures that have been touted around the country, we've been going after them. Uh, sometimes they are hawkers and say that, oh, it's not just COVID-19, it can also heal 200 ailments at the same time. We have been going after that. That is part of our routine business. That is part of our day-to-day -day doing. We have 36, uh, of, we have offices in 36 states plus FCT. And once we know about this uh, spurious uh, claim about COVID-19 treatment, the director of pharmacovigilance and post-marketing surveillance sends the fillers out to all our state coordinators. Please go after this particular product, go, go, go under surveillance to ensure that these products are mopped out of the market. And we do mopping of products that do not have NAVDAQ number or products that have forged NAVDAQ number. Sometimes they forge, uh, they forge our NAVDAQ numbers. 
um, but we go after them. That is part of our daily routine. Awareness, that's a big issue. We do awareness every time on different issues. We have NAPDAC and Your Health on Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, where we talk about one thing or the other, but awareness always come up uh, routinely on one, you know, if, if it is a, a use of a, a carbide to ripen fruit or hawkers or people that, are, that mess up, you know, drinks or counterfeiters, we go after them. We also have the enforcement uh, directorate that go after counterfeiters or people that have spurious claims on different things. So these are part of our routine and daily uh, activities. That, that, does that mean that we, did, we have done everything right? No, it is, that, it is not one agency effort. It is city effort. If a citizen sees some, something that is spurious, that is too good to be believed, they can call our 800 number. They can go to the nearest NAVDAC's office and say, we, we, we found this, we got this, we, we heard about this. That way, all of us are working together to keep ourselves uh, safe. In terms of listing and approval, that's a very good question. Uh, again, let me just use myself as an example. I have a product, a herbal medicine that my grandfather has been, we have used in our family for ages, it works and whatnot, and I happen to have gone to school. Or even if I didn't go to school, maybe my son uh, went to school, uh, I can apply to NAPDAC. I know I can apply to NAPDAC. That's another thing. Uh, we have to do a better job through our awareness that if you have something in your family that has worked in, you know, in, in, before, you can apply to NAPDAC. We can do you know, a better job than we are going to be doing that. But now, if, the, if I now want to apply to NAPDAC, you go on our website. First of all, we are not uh, a culture that is used to uh, going to websites and whatnot, but we'll get there. We'll get there. That's part of, that's part of the reasons why we do this uh, weekly uh, TV, uh, NAPDAC and Your Health uh, program. We also have a radio uh, program. We do print. Um, we go to print media ev almost every time. So, but we still have to keep our people aware. So I'm still using myself. As an example, you go to uh, navdac.gov.ng, you will see, I was, you know, somebody told me, I will see uh, some flashes, some images flashing. And once I see uh, an image of an harbor plant, I can click it. Once I click it, I will see, it will take me to a page where you have requirements to submit. I click that uh, requirement to submit, I will see the list. Now, I'm educated, I'm an educated person. I see the list, I will start writing up. If I'm not educated, I will call my son or my cousin or somebody, please, could you guide me? Anybody that says, oh, you have to bring 100,000 Naira, you better run. Because you should have somebody in your family that is educated, even if you're not educated. And once that is submitted to us, actually now we are making it simpler which is the re part of the reasons why we did the MSME program uh, last Friday. We can do, you can do your registration online. Again, when you go to our website, you will see a laptop image. That's the first one. You click here, there's a, a button at the corner, the right-hand corner, that says click here. Once you click there, if you have a CAC number or you have a business name, you can start your registration process at that point. And we've already highlighted which one is micro, which one is a drug, which one is food, uh, what, should, what are the options, how about medicine? We have all those uh, on our online uh, portal. Once I submit that as an applicant, we will harness, we will gather the data and we look through, make sure everything is fine. Even the, the payment is also online through Remita. We want to cut down interaction between human beings because that was where compromise uh, came in the past and corruption. Professor, so make sure you pay, 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 online, uh, pay online and then you submit. If it is approved, 
that will be listed, that will be approved for two years. That is listing. After that is now the clinical trial. If the applicant goes through clinical trial and the clinical trial, uh, we have watched it, we have uh, supervised it and is successful, successful, then the uh, Haba medicine medicinal product can get full approval for five years, five years renewable as opposed to two years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ade, for that explanation. I'd like to bring something up with you now. You spoke about approval earlier, and there's a, there's a study I'm looking at today in This Day newspapers that came out uh, from an organization called the Quality Assessment of Some Alcohol-Based Sanitizers. And it's quite worrying to see from this study that 63 percent of hand sanitizers in the federal capital territory are apparently fake, according to the study. And in quote, they said the NAFDAQ should step up efforts to clamp down on manufacturers of unregistered hand sanitizers. So it would, be, it would be great to find out how you react to that. And then to add to that, 54 Gene, the African company uh, that's involved in genomics research, are you doing any work with them at the moment? Is NAPDAC doing any work with them? Because they have been at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. Uh, we are not doing anything with this group. You said the genomic? Is it 54 genomic Gene, ma'am. 54 Gene, an African genomics research company based here. They have created quite a few mobile labs as well, and they have been doing a lot of work and research at the forefront of this fight against COVID-19. No, we have not done anything with them. Uh, that doesn't mean if they come, we will not look and see uh, what they are really doing. But uh, it's interesting that you brought up the issue of uh, uh, sanitizers uh, and possibility of... Uh, of uh, uh, qual no, some of them not having quality. Before the lockdown, once we started doing exped uh, expedited approval for sanitizers, I asked our post-marketing surveillance to go to the market because that's what they, they do normally. Go to the market and see how many sanitizers have now that number, how many don't. And this was in Lagos. Out of the seven, sanitizer samples that we got, six do not have NAVDAC number. And they are on our website as we speak under alerts or recalls. We quickly sent fillers to all our state coordinators, look for this type of these products and mop them out. The statistics given in uh, FCT is, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's accurate, 66%, because FCT was one of the uh, zones that did post-marketing surveillance on their sanitizers, on the sanitizers, rather, that, that are available in the market. And it was not 66%. We found three or four out of maybe seven uh, that were, you know, uh, tested or that were, you know, taken from the market. Some of, another thing that some people don't realize is that even we found out that we registered one through the expedited approval and one of our uh, officers didn't know that we've already approved it because everything was moving very, very fast. Like you have, we approved yesterday or two days, last week rather, and, you know, they found the product on the market uh, this week. So it is... The 66%, I don't think it's accurate. Uh, we do a lot of post-marketing surveillance. It's part and parcel of our regulatory uh, process. And if the genomic uh, group or whatever is doing uh, a post-marketing surveillance for us, I believe they should come to us and let's uh, share data. Thank you. Well, Prof, quickly, uh, we've been told that Nigeria is participating in the WHO uh, solidarity trials. And FCT and five other states are said to be involved. Now, is uh, now that part of that uh, process? And what is the value of a solidarity trial? I ask because some Nigerians are saying, oh, could this be a case of uh, Nigerians being used as guinea pig for some treatment that has not yet been scientifically uh, proven or confirmed? Thank you for asking that question. Uh, Nigerians, Nigerians will not be used as guinea pigs not on NAVDAQ's watch. Not on NAVDAQ's watch. You can take it to the bank, uh, that statement, uh, because this is our mandate. 
and it is our daily activity to ensure that we're not used as guinea pigs. Coming to solidarity trial, solidarity trial is a trial that is done in concert. Uh, several hospitals uh, working together, but with a center, a, a, a clinical trial center, almost in the middle. Uh, so let's just give an example. Let's say Lagos State is doing a, a clinical trial treatment on chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. It becomes the center, or whether it is Abuja, you know, any center in Abuja, it becomes the center. Now there are many hospitals that may be using chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine to treat COVID-19 patients. So what the Solidarity Trial, trial does is to network all these other hospitals and to use similar uh, regimen, to use similar protocols, meaning if uh, the chloroquine is supposed to be used uh, 250 times two day, you know, every two, uh, twice a day times whatever, that is the same that they're going to be using. So that is solidarity trial within the country. And sometimes it is across countries. Why? this solidarity trial is done is that so that a lot of evidence can be gathered quickly. So in terms of what the role of NAVDA, we had a meeting uh, last week with National uh, Ethics Committee and NREC, uh, so because we are the two regulatory bodies in terms of eth ethics and approval or review rather of clinical trial protocol. We had a meeting and we were discussing the modalities since it's a multi-center trial, NAVDAC and NREC are the regulatory agencies, uh, bodies that will oversee, will review the protocol to make sure that it is according to best practices, uh, global best practices. So NAVDAC is right at the center of it. We will wow. have to review and then also inspect the sites. So it's a lot of uh, dynamics. Well, thank, you thank you very much, uh, Professor Adeyeye. On that note, we'll have to just thank you. Thank you so much.